Hello friends, welcome to Trinity for Worship. My name is Pastor Sarah and I am pleased to be the pastor at Trinity. I hope if you're looking for a church family that you will give us an opportunity and look on our church website, on our Facebook page, you can look at our YouTube channel. Um, it's really easy now to see what it would be like to be worshiping with Trinity and be a part of this congregation. And so we hope that those are tools that you will use to learn about us. Everybody needs a church family. Everybody needs a place where they can feel like they can connect with God and where they can worship worship and be around others who can support and encourage them. So it's my prayer that our church could be that for you. I hope that you'll con consider joining us each week. Um, we do have worship on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Um, there's a live stream that takes place on Facebook and YouTube, as well as in-person option, though of course that is wearing a mask and social distancing at this time. Um, and then we have our 7 p.m. premiere, which you're a part of right now. So it is our prayer that this service will bless you and yours, um, and we hope that you have a wonderful week. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, everybody. Bet you're excited about this coming up mm -hmm. week, aren't you? What's going on? Spring break. Spring break, and I bet a lot of you all have plans for spring break. If you're not in school, though, that's no big deal. But if you are in school or have brothers or sisters in school, it's going to be spring break week. So today's scripture comes from the book of Ephesians. And Paul wrote many letters to different churches. And one of the churches he wrote to was a church in Ephesus. And that's where our scripture lesson comes from today. And I'm going to read Ephesians 2.10. And it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so that we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. How did, do you, did you know that you are a masterpiece? Mm -hmm. A masterpiece is something that's unique, something very, very special, usually one of a kind. Are you one of a kind, mm -hmm. aren't you? There's nobody just like you, are there? God created all of us to be his masterpiece. That's what the Bible says. But he created us different, didn't he? Some of us are tall. Some of us are short. Some of us have green eyes like me. Some have blue eyes like you. And you know what? Even God created a masterpiece in identical twins, but they're different, aren't they? There's no two people just alike. And that's the way God planned it. God planned for his masterpiece to all look different. And also God planned for us to have talents and gifts. God wants us to use those talents and gifts. And some of us have different talents and gifts. Um, some of us like to talk like me. Some people don't like to talk. They like to be quiet. But God has given all of us different gifts and talents. And the scripture says that he created us to do the good things he planned for us long ago. Did you know that God planned for you before you were ever born? He knew what you were going to look like, and he knew the gifts and talents that you were going to have. And th there was a quote that Dr. Seuss said that I really, really like, and it says, Today you are you, that is truer than true. There's no one alive who's youer than you, is there? That's pretty true. That's the way God made us. God only made one version of each of us. And God created us to do good works. And as believers, we serve Jesus by using the gifts and talents that he gave us to do the good works that we were meant to do. And I hope you are doing that. I hope, Hadley, you're sharing your good works and your talents with others when we share in the children's message. And as we get back to worship and Sunday school, I hope you'll share some other gifts and talents that God has given you. And for you, all others too. We know that God is faithful and he's going to complete the work in our lives if we believe in him. If we believe in God, he will complete the work that he has planned for us. And remember, you're God's masterpiece just the way you are. That's the way God planned you. God made you his masterpiece. You're special and unique and God loves every one of us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for making us your masterpiece, special and unique. Thank you for loving us and giving us our gifts and talents. Help us to do good works for you. 
We know we are saved by your grace, and when we believe, we will have eternal life with you. Amen. Boys and girls, have a fun, fun week, but, but please be safe. See you next week. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised you up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ in order that the coming ages might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wow, Paul has a lot to say to us this morning. He really likes to tell it how it is, if we want to hear it or not. And this morning's scripture is a pretty hard one to hear in the beginning. No one wants to believe it or face it, but there it is. We are all sinners. It's not exactly how I like to picture myself for sure, but there it is. Paul says it pretty plainly. We are all sinners by nature, children of wrath. Greeks, Jews, Gentiles, you, me, all of us, sinners by nature. It's a little hard to hear. It makes you squirm just a little bit, but we are. The human condition, simply put, is one of sin, a fact that most of us would like to ignore. But the truth is that we each have a tendency to sin. It's in our nature. Each of us have a leaning to stray away from the will of God at least every once in a while. As Paul puts it, we tend to want to live into the passions of our own flesh. We are constantly pulled away from God to the temptations of this world. The ways of the world are simply easier than the ways of God. As we look over history, we see it time and time again. From the very beginning, Adam and Eve in the garden strayed from the instructions of God. From that moment on Monday, Thursday, as the crowd chants to release Barabbas instead of Christ. Humanity put the cross between themselves and God, choosing Jesus to be executed. Humanity continually turns from the love and compassion that God desires for them to their own ways. Time and time again, people allow their own desires to separate us from God. Humans are sinful. A popular call to confession sums it up. We often hear, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. It's hard to admit. We all do have our own favorite little sins that we like to cling to for one reason or another. If you're like me, I've become pretty good at deceiving myself, myself about that. I don't like labeling myself as a sinner. I doubt any of us really do. In fact, I bet most of us spend a great deal of time trying to avoid naming our own sins. It's pretty overwhelming and humbling to take that task on. So often, we only like to consider 
the big sins as the sins that we judge ourselves by. You know, murder, stealing, the biggies, they're pretty easy to avoid. Or perhaps we might even extend it out to the Ten Commandments, although those probably start to hit a little closer to home. That lying and gossiping can be a little tricky. We also sometimes like to add some sins to our own personal list to name in others, if we find it in the scripture or not, as long as it doesn't reflect any part of our own lives. But the truth is, if we expand the definition of sin to its most basic definition, we will all find ourselves sinful. Sin is anything that separates us from the love of God or love of neighbor. It becomes a lot harder to live without sin, for sure, under that definition. For Paul, sin is anything that prevents us from living into the fullness that God has called us to. For Paul, anything that separates us from God leads to death and darkness. Sin is anything that is slowly killing our souls, separating us from God, literally or figuratively. That's a pretty tough definition to let sink in. Anything that separates us from God. That means even good things can become sinful if we allow them to step between our relationship with neighbor or with God. I am a huge procrastinator. I don't want to be, but I am, and I know this. My family likes to joke that my house is never cleaner than when I have to prepare a sermon. Writing sermons tends to be something that doesn't really bring me great joy, and I can really procrastinate a long time with. Therefore, I will find anything to keep me from having to sit down and actually work on the sermon. I enjoy the research and the reading articles, listening to podcasts and talking to friends and colleagues about the week's reading, but the actual sitting down and writing it, it takes me a while to get around to it. So I will find anything, including housekeeping, which I hate almost equally as much, to prevent me from writing the sermon. So needless to say that I find all kinds of things that just have to be done right there in this moment. Laundry that just can't wait to be folded. Floors that just must be mopped this second, even though I haven't done it for several weeks. Dishes that have finally soaked long enough in the sink that need to be dealt with in this moment. Yesterday, I even managed to get a good chunk of my windows washed inside and out to prevent me from sitting down and writing this sermon. While cleaning is a good pastime, and definitely something I should invest more of my own time in, my husband will always say he is super thankful when I get invited to preach somewhere. <laughs> I get a little caught up. The use of cleaning to avoid the work that really needs to be done is not a good or useful habit, although my family disagrees. When we use even good things to separate us from the work that needs to be done, especially the work that we need to do with our relationship with God and neighbor, it can become sinful. Therefore, our jobs, our work can become sin when it is used to prevent us from living in harmony with God or one another. The way we interact with our families can become sinful if we focus on the wrong issues. If perfection, appearances, and power are our focus, instead of love, support, and grace, it can be used as a sin. There are so many things that can come between us and God. Sometimes they even look useful and good. And we do it without even realizing it. Our self-doubt can separate us from God if we are not living into the creatures that God created us to be. On the other hand, inflated egos can also be sin if it prevents us from living in love with God and neighbor.
neighbor. We each have things within us that separate us from God, and the list could be endless. We all know what our, our difficulties are in relation to God. The worldly ways call us away from our relationship with each other and with God too easily and too often. They can look good, they can be apparent, but they are things that are separating us, that make our lives less rich than God desired our lives to be. We all have those things that separate us, that come between us and God, us and our neighbor. And we have to look at those things and acknowledge them. This time of Lent has been given to us to reflect on ourselves. Lent is always a time to call us to honestly evaluate who we are and what is separating us from God. Dear and Lent, as we walk the road to Easter morning with Jesus, it requires that we walk through our own path of repentance and confession. We must admit that we are human. We begin Lent with the words, From dust we have come, and to dust we shall return, reminding us of our humanity. And in our humanity, none of us are without sin. For me, at least, there's something freeing in knowing that I am not alone in my <clears throat> sinful nature. We all are without sin. We each have something that is separating us from God, despite our best efforts. In this time of Lent, we are called to look within and name those things that separate us from God, to confess those areas, and in so doing, Make room for God's grace. That's the good news of this morning's scripture. We are not alone in our sinful nature. And even if we were, God still loves us. While we were sinners, God loved us. God is rich in mercy and great in love. God loved us so much that he sent his only son for our sake in our sinful nature, allowing him to die on the cross for us, raising him from the grave for us, that we might receive immeasurable riches of God's grace and kindness. While no one likes to admit their shortcomings, and it is a pretty painful process to go through, it is free. Free to let go of those things in us and around us that are slowly killing us. Free to let go of those things that separate us from the love of God, family, and neighbor. It's free to clean out those dark corners of our life and to let in God's light and love. That is what these 40 days of Lent are for. A little spring cleaning of our soul. As I was wiping down my windows this week, which has not been done, by the way, in, I would like to say three or four years, but it's probably like five or six years. As I washed the mud off the outside of my living room windows, the light poured in. God's grace shined through those windows and lightened the mood in our heart. That's what this time is for, letting God's light in, cleaning out those areas that are separating us from that light. God wants to break in and lighten up those corners. God wants to free us from the things that are separating us from God and causing us to feel like we are slowly dying. God wants to give us life. That is what God created us for. God wants to free us from all the things that separate us from God. In all that we have done, in thought, word, and deed. God wants to free us from those things that separate us, the actions of omission and commission that come between us and God. God desires life for all of us. When we open ourselves more fully to God's peace 
and mercy. When we look honestly inside ourselves to see what is indeed separating us from God, we will see that God is waiting there with open arms to let the light in, to let the love surround us. For it's us separating ourselves from God, not God separating himself from us. When we can name what is killing us and turn it over to a God who loves us, we find light and life in Christ. <clears throat> when we open ourselves to God's grace and mercy, when we embrace with realism our own sinful nature and embrace our brokenness, that is when we make room for healing and wholeness. So knowing that we are all in this together, each one of us holding on to our own separate forms of separation from God, each, each of us sinners, it gives us comfort and ability to name that sin. What separates you from God? What are you willing to move out of your way this Lenten season in order to move closer to God? to neighbor? What can you let go of? What habits are you using to divide instead of unite? What thoughts are you holding on to that separate you from the purpose that God made you for, to love God and neighbor? What old ideas are you holding on to that God just might be asking you to let go of? to make more room for love. What is killing you slowly that God wants to take from you so that you can make room for light, love, and mercy? Let it go and let God give you the light and life that God has prepared for you.
to me